Western RPGs have become a staple of the current console generation. Some of the biggest releases on the Xbox 360 and PS3 have been games such as The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, Fallout 3, and Fallout New Vegas, and The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is already generating huge amounts of buzz even though its release is 9 months away. Like all games, they do some things very well and other things not so well. Here, I have highlighted the six of the principles that James Paul G. defines in his book that I think Western RPGs do particularly well. The Achievement Principle states that for learners of all skill levels, there are intrinsic rewards from the beginning, customized to each learner's level, effort, and growing mastery and signaling the learner's ongoing achievements. Achievements can quickly become the driving reason for gamers to ch play a game, especially on current generation consoles like the Xbox 360 or PS3. This is because the Achievement Principle is built into both of these consoles, the Achievement and Gamer Score system of the Xbox and the PS3 trophy rating system. The little dings of the system letting the player know that they just completed something awesome or essential to the game quickly, quickly takes over all their reasons for playing the games. Speaking from experience, players will often fire up a gaming session just to get a few more points or trophies, and by a few more I mean as many as humanly possible before sleep or other obligations take over. Besides the achievements built into the system, the exploration built into RPGs allows for great opportunities to be rewarded for poking around. G shares a story about finding a rifle better than the crowbar he was using. Similarly, exploration leveling in Morrowind, Oblivion, and Fallout can and probably will lead to finding better weapons and armor to aid in the quest to complete the game. Using these weapons over and over again allows a player to master them, and the higher a player's mastery with a particular weapon set comes more skills and perks for the player to unlock. Players also gain a sense of achievement from completing quests and completing the game. This is the sort of thing that keeps players coming back over and over again to wander the lands of Cyrodiil and Oblivion or the Wasteland in the Fallout series. The probing principle states that learning is a cycle of probing the world, or doing something, reflecting in and on this action and, on this basis, forming hypothesis, reprobing the world to test this hypothesis, and then accepting or rethinking the hypothesis. Enemies in an RPG are usually created to have some kind of weakness or weaknesses. These are normally not spelled out for the player in the game or even in the game manual. These weaknesses or resistances, as is also often the case, can be relayed to the player by NPCs, non-playable characters, or, as is more often the case, the player figures them out on their own. The first time a player encounters an enemy, the player won't know the best and fastest way to defeat it. They may discover this in the first battle and immediately adapt this new strategy, or it may take a few tries before they realize that ice magic works better than a sword. Once the player identifies this tactic, they can make a quick change to the ice magic to end things faster whenever they encounter this particular enemy. This also helps players know when to switch weapons even if they don't have an ability or weapon that the enemy is weak against. If an armored enemy is resistant to fists or standard ammunition, even if the player doesn't have armor piercing rounds they may have explosives or lasers. While these won't offer any special advantage the player knows, the fight won't last unnecessarily long because of it. Players may take a while to figure these things out, and until they do they will try new things. If the player finds a combination that works better than the one they had before, they will use this combination, whenever resources permit, be it ammo or uh, magic, to level up faster. Research and design challenges in Games for Learning also touches on this. Players are more likely to remember what they learn and apply it if they discover it for themselves. If a player reads something in a manual, they might remember it at some point while playing, but if they discover it for themselves in the middle of a battle, it'll stick with them much longer. The probing principle also intertwines with the multiple routes principle. Players may not immediately know the best route through a quest, and this could, could result in failing the quest, death, or a second-rate reward. Their second time through the quest, be it on a subsequent playthrough or after resuming from a checkpoint, hopefully they will realize there is a better way to make progress through and complete the quest. The self-knowledge principle states that the virtual world is constructed in such a way that learners not only about the domain, but also about themselves and their current and potential capacities. Western RPGs give players the flexibility to figure out for themselves what they like and how to play the game. There are very few, if any, barriers to what a player can choose to do inside and outside of the quests. Again, tying into the multiple routes principle, the multiple choices quests give the player allow them to see what they like best in the game. While knowing they prefer sword fighting to spell casting or hand-to-hand -hand combat to laser weapons may not be the most practical knowledge in the real world, in the context of the game this knowledge is key. This knowledge is the difference between players having to force themselves to do something they may struggle with and allowing the player to enjoy what they're good at. RPGs can also allow a player to discover what they're good at or what they think they might enjoy. 
For example, a player may discover that they enjoy puzzle solving or critical thinking through the many puzzles in Oblivion. The identity principle states that learning involves taking on and playing with identities in such a way that the learner has real choices in developing the virtual identity and ample opportunity to meditate on the relationship between new identities and old ones. Players engage their multiple real-world identities, a virtual identity, and a projective identity. Western RPGs excel at letting the player choose their identity in the game and apply their real-world identity to the character. The Elder Scrolls games like Morrowind and Oblivion, and the newer Fallout games like Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas let the player customize their name, appearance, specialization skills, stat attributes, and weapon specializations, which are also part of the specialization skills. The game gives you very minimal backstory for the player character. For example, in Oblivion you're in jail for some reason, and in Fallout 3 you're just born, and in Fallout New Vegas you recover from being shot in the head. These skills define how the player interacts with the game. Will they use magic or swords? Will they use hammers or plasma weaponry? They also influence the different routes a player may choose in the quests. Speech skills may open up different routes than stealth skills. Choosing the character's appearance and skill sets builds the player's virtual identity. Players also build their identities by imposing their own moral choices on the character they create. Will they kill innocent bystanders, or will they kill only those that attack them? Finally, players interact with their character identities through the projected identity. The player's actions cause them to think about what kind of person they want to be in-game. The player isn't simply imposing their will on the character. They have a sort of internal dialogue between themselves and themselves as the character to decide the best morals and ideals to apply to the identity. This dialogue can cause a player to feel poorly about certain in-game actions. For example, if playing an evil character and a quest gives good karma upon completion, the player could feel like they betrayed their character by making them less evil, the same way a good player character will feel bad after incurring negative karma. This internal dialogue ties directly into the self-knowledge principle because these identities help the player learn about themselves as they take on the identities they create in the game. The multiple routes principle states that there are multiple ways to make progress or move ahead in the game. This allows learners to make choices, rely on their own strengths and styles of learning and problem solving, while also exploring alternative styles. Games like Oblivion and Fallout New Vegas have almost an infinite number of paths between the start of the game and the end of the game, or the main quest. Players can power through the main quest and totally ignore the side quests and complete the game in a single digit number of hours. This isn't recommended in Fallout 3 if you don't have the downloadable content because the game just ends when you complete the main quest as opposed to letting you roam around like Oblivion. Or, players can explore the world, completing any number of side quests while simultaneously completing or completely ignoring the main quest. Some players even choose to completely ignore the quests and storylines altogether and explore the world on their own to see what kind of place the developers created. This freedom to choose a path allows the players to use their strengths to play the game the way they are most comfortable with. Oblivion and Fallout let players choose the skills they want to specialize in at the beginning of the game and can continue to improve upon these skills through in-game actions. This lets players choose whether they want to specialize in stealth, or guns, or swords, or magic, or weapons that make huge explosions. These skills allow the player to tackle the quests in the way they choose. Not only does this give the player the freedom to choose how, they play, how to play the game, it also opens up the possibility for multiple playthroughs and different skill sets, potentially giving gamers new opportunities to grow and develop problem-solving skills. For example, in Oblivion, instead of being a battle mage, on a second playthrough a player could play as a stealthy thief. This choice is often present in each quest, not just for the overarching plotline. Many quests have multiple routes from start to finish. One route might let you sweet-talk a guard into letting you into a restricted area, but another route in the same quest might let you blow through everyone standing in your way until you get to what you're looking for. This allows players to complete as many quests as they want because they're not impaired by limits, greatly increasing the fun level. The psychosocial moratorium principle states that learners can take risks in a space where real-world consequences are lowered. Western RPGs do this very well. Most RPGs allow you to save the game at any point and reload the game from that exact point. In Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Oblivion, when you die, you automatically reload from the last checkpoint or save point. This is not the case for some other RPGs like Pokemon or Final Fantasy. Many of these games allow you to save the game anywhere in the main or overworld, but not in a battle. Some don't even let you save everywhere, instead using predetermined save points. While this does not necessarily lower real-world consequences, unless the player is trying to finish a battle before an engagement, it is unnecessarily annoying. In most Western-style RPGs, you can save anywhere, including in the middle of a battle. This removes even the annoyance of not being able to stop in the middle of a battle. It also allows the player to create their own checkpoints and not worry about what happens when they die. While death is still frustrating, there are no real-world consequences, and fewer consequences in losing a turn-based battle. 
because in games like Oblivion and Fallout, when the player dies, they simply respawn at the last checkpoint. No loss of stats, money, or items. This is a huge confidence booster because the player is more focused on completing the quest or getting to the next level instead of worrying about dying. Another way to manage this is to be able to dynamically set the difficulty level. In many games, the player must choose a difficulty level at the beginning of the game and then are stuck with it for the rest of that particular playthrough. In the Fallout series and the Elder Scrolls series, the player can manage the difficulty on the fly with a menu selection or a difficulty slider. These six principles are what take Western RPGs and make them into an example of how motivating a learning game should be. If game developers and learning experts could examine G's principles and study how each is used and represented in the most popular games, it would go a long way towards making educational video games that actually taught students something beyond the standard skill and drill. Until next time, Education 222.